Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we are going to land a Kerbal on the moon, we're going to fly by Dion, and we're going to land a probe on Europa, if everything goes well. We do especially want the Europa landing because if I'm correct we do have a contract for that and that means that we will uh, risk failing this contract, this one right here, if we do not land that probe. Now, of course, uh, we will have other chances if that one fails. The actual deadline for this contract is in like nine years. So we do have time, but when you think about transfers to Jupiter, nine years is not a whole lot of time. We might have a couple of windows more before we're uh, starting to be in trouble. So yes, we want to complete those. Anyway, so I have to pick a Kerbal to land on the surface, and I think it would be good to land an engineer this time. Good thing I made sure that these can be controlled without anybody on board. And I'm going to pick uh, Bill Kerman, I think. Um, or Wilnerd. I think we got to send Bill. Uh, send one of the orange suits over to our base on the moon. Okay, so transfer crew. Okay, we are all topped off, and let's take a look at our situ situation in relation to the base. Uh, the base is right there, so probably on the next orbit, or the orbit after that, we will hit it, so we don't need too much food, water, and oxygen in here. We should make sure that we have the basics, and we do. Alright, so time to decouple. Mm, undock. Okay, Bill. Of course, I'm not going to just keep it to these single crewed pods, don't worry. We will have heavier landers. It will be too tedious to constantly uh, deliver Kerbals from one point to another individually. But I thought this was a nifty little system and relatively cheap and small. You see, it's six tons and um, yeah, it's uh, it's got its own interesting efficiency, but we will have larger ones. The Gemini capsule in particular, it, it carries only two Kerbals, but the good thing is it's very light for carrying two Kerbals, so that's nice. And actually the lunar module, the Apollo lunar module, is underrated as far as its mass because uh, people see the mass in the VAB and they don't understand that that includes the entire upper stage fuel, right? The entire ascent module fuel, which is 2,200 meters per second or something like that, as well as the engine. So it's actually a lot lighter than it might seem in the VAB initially. Well, that's that periapsis is like right over the base. I usually prefer to have it ahead of the base, but we'll we'll do with this. This is okay. Now, last time we had a little bit of a inefficiency coming down. We started a little bit too early, I felt. So we're going to try and fix that this time. We are, I feel, still a little bit too early, but this gives us a better chance to correct the the fact that we were too far north. Okay, we have a target difference less than a kilometer. And what was the suicide burn of 3 minutes and 39 seconds? That's a heck of a menacing crater, but we should probably send a science team into that, huh? Up, oh, we're landing short again. Or is that right? No, we're landing long. Shoot. I'm misreading the situation. Good thing these are nifty little landers in order to test stuff out. Basically that's the idea, that these are, are our testing landers to give me a feel for landing at a particular location. And then once we bring in the heavies I want to be well practiced and get the timings right. Now important to that is that our heavier landers should have a similar thrust to weight ratio to these. Okay, let's try this. 2.5 seconds left on the suicide burn countdown. Oh, we are entering render range of the base. Okay, let's make for a landing here. Oh, 
Okay, touchdown. We are 137 meters away from Moonbase 1 and 341 meters away from the previous pod. And uh, by my reckoning, that means we've done a better job of landing closer to the base, though we still have work to do. We have 2,933 meters per second left in the pod, which means that we easily have enough to get back to orbit, assuming it's not lying to us. And let's have Bill Kerman EVA. Okay, board. All right. Now, no sound for some reason on boarding, but Chris Lian and Bill Kerman have have entered the base and uh, life support wise we have a year's worth basically and moon for one is back up to 60 days but uh, we will have to resupply that but success things are looking good for this whole setup and we will endeavor to put together some more complicated systems in the near future okay ladies and gentlemen we are here in the Jupiter system with our Europa lander and I decided to uh, spend a little bit more delta V and instead of waiting another orbit around Jupiter try to get into Europa's SOI on this orbit and land. So initially we had a plot uh, right around here that would bring us closer to Europa well actually just matching the orbit of Europa and then uh, it would slowly sidle into Europa's SOI but rather than that I want to uh, get into Europa's SOI right where we were going to do that maneuver. And uh, that is possible with a node in 43 minutes. And it will cost 2,002 meters per second, which we have in this stage. So again, taking a look here, uh, we're using this stage right now. And we've got the fuel up here locked. And this fuel up here is what's supposed to allow us to land on Europa, hopefully. So that is the plan. It's time warp. Well, as far as frame rates are concerned, it's doing pretty good as far as physics time. Uh, we're at 4x time warp here and nary a blink in the green timer. So that's nice. Of course, there's a fairly simple probe, not that many parts. New simulation body unlocked Europa. Well, we should do some science, huh? Um, we don't have too much science on this because it was optimized for just sheer delta V. High over Europa's chaotic plains. Sounds like a fun landing spot. Well, uh, we did not get the science for that particular chaotic plains transmission. This orbital perturbation experiment, something's wrong with it as far as whether it can send the data. Let's also analyze telemetry. This is the most important one. Analyze telemetry is the one we absolutely must succeed with. Ah, this uh, Geiger-Muller tube also had a problem, but let's make sure that we can analyze telemetry. If we can't do that, we're not going to get the contract fulfilled. And we need data from this particular experiment for that to work out. No... That's not good. Let me try it again. Well, let me try the analyze telemetry on this one, but that would still not help. I wonder what the issue is. Anyway, if it turns out that we could transmit the data, but it just wouldn't accept it for the contract purposes, I'm just going to force the contract to be fulfilled. I'm not putting up with any of this nonsense. So anyway, um, and this was, you know, an issue from before I s started Beyond History uh, with the old Realism Overhaul series. We already had this sort of issue with it not recognizing when, when data was being sent and science points should be earned and a contract should be fulfilled based on that science. So, in order to actually make or a tight orbit around Europa, we're talking about 500 meters per second. So, this stage is going to end up in a loose orbit around Europa, and then this stage is going to have to do the rest. 
And slow down, please. We're actually going quite a bit faster with respect to the surface than I thought. Europa's about fairly close to the moon, it looks like, as far as the orbital velocity. Okay, that's that stage. 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 Oops, I locked the fuels. Uh, um, I'm going to have to go to the space center and come back. It's not going to understand that I can fire those thrusters right now. Okay, let me come back. Okay, we are all good and we are continuing to make orbit around Europa. A little bit past periapsis, but bringing apoapsis down. And we've got 2,600 meters per second in this probe. Let's get surface info up and see if this is a particularly interesting biome that we're over right now, because we're close to our periapsis. Let's see. Ridged Plains. Sounds a little bit dangerous for the landing bit. Um, let's do some science. We're close to Europa now, just above Europa's ridged plains. Let's see if we can get the temperature scan science. Okay, it did add the science for that, so as we move on to a different biome, hopefully that'll work. This is just a general pressure scan near Europa. And it did add science for that. Orbital perturbation experiments. This one. Nope. No such luck. And analyze telemetry, the all-important one. Nope. Well... I might have to force the contract to be complete at this rate. We will see. So apoapsis is there, periapsis is there. I'd like to land in the daylight. So we'll... Wow. Uh, it's nice not to have lag. It's unusual for me. Okay, uh, at periapsis we'll bring down our apoapsis to prepare for a landing. Yep, whatever's wrong with the other instruments, it's not wrong with the temperature scan. That does successfully transmit. So maybe I'll have to look at the configuration files to see what's different about them. But analyzed tele telemetry consistently does not work. We are just going to land on the belly of this. There are no landing struts. Though this, this area seems ill-defined. I'd rather land where the train's going to be well-defined. So let's wait till we get around here. This is an interesting spot right there, huh? That's a definite crater. I mean, well, impact point, let's put it that way. Maybe we should aim for that. It looks like a bullseye anyway. Okay, let's wait a little bit. Um, it says suicide burn countdown is three minutes. Okay. I think I, there's that there's the spot we're going for, I think. Yep. That is the spot. Doesn't look so interesting like this compared to on the map. Just looks like uh it's well, I guess if it's a damp spot then that is very interesting, isn't it? But basically it looks like it's a damp spot. Europa's craters. Well, I think we can do a thermometer reading here. Uh, where is it? Yep. Another 90 science if we get it. The engines on this are just one kilonewton thrusters, so nothing particularly special. No throttling, but infinite restarts. I don't want to land on that ridge, so let's aim for right around here, maybe. Okay, we are now heading straight down, coming in for landing in this area between that hill and that hill. Okay, final descent is looking good here. I'm not moving it away from just straight up here. And actually... Let me make sure that it doesn't spin around once we... You know, just in case we start having a positive situation. Um, pitch 90, hitting 90, execute. So now we'll just keep straight up and down. Well, there's a bit of a slope here. Uh, 
Okay. Good, we started going up, but it didn't like flip over. Okay, RCS off. Okay, current biome Europa's craters, not in space above Europa's craters. It recognizes our situation is landed. Let us try the telemetry analysis first. 135 science. Nope, it's not giving us the science. And if we take a look at the contract, the contract is not fulfilled. So I'll, I'll accept the fact that I can't get the science. Um, let's at least get the science for the thermometer. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll figure that out and maybe we'll come back to this probe. It'll still be on the surface. So we'll just revisit it once I've figured out how to fix the problem and then we'll send the science. Of course, we missed some science in orbit already and we're not getting back to orbit with this. Okay, that says that that transmitted and it looks like it. But I will not accept the failure to complete the contract that I think we've done the thing. So I should just force complete that. It's a shame that we can't get much more science from this. Okay, well we got two of the five instruments we could get science from here. It's sort of floating above the ground. Anyway, uh, let's go back to the Space Center and resolve this. Okay, let's say we talked it over with our contract, uh, contractee? Con I'm the contractor, so yeah. Uh, contractee and they agreed that we had actually done the thing so that is complete uh, our other contracts you can see here um, crew count of 10 that'll take a while crew duration record of 180 days technically we've done that but you have to stay with the vehicle in order for it to count but those are trivial and um, they automatically give you those so yeah I didn't actually pick those up uh, science data from space around Titan science data from surface of Titan and uncrewed Titan landing. Maybe after this Titan shot mission heads into the SOI of Dion, we should aim it at Titan finally to, to get this done. I mean, uh, that's what it's for. Let's see if we can do it. And uh, Neptune flyby, Pluto flyby, Uranus flyby are the ambassador missions. And position satellite in a stationary orbit of Jupiter, we may need the Nerva for that because it's a very low orbit around Jupiter. The Nerva, of course, wouldn't be well I don't know if we could keep the fuel cool and all with radiators maybe we could transfer the Nerva all the way out to Jupiter but then the Nerva is very expensive so maybe we should just have it do the initial uh, part of the transfer keep it in orbit around Earth but in a high orbit and then pull it back down again and then we could reuse it but on the other hand it might be a little bit better to just send it out there and have it do this I'll see what kind of situation we've got as far as Delta V for this mission. Anyway, sorry to have to do the debug two bar way of doing things, but let us move on. Okay, so here is our Titan shot probe again, and we are going to head into Dion's sphere of influence, and then the goal is to boost it up to Titan, uh, so we can set that as a target. The trouble is that we really need to hit Titan either here or here, not over there. So that could be an added annoyance. Uh, let's actually see, add a maneuver here. You can see we've got 1,651. And, well, it's very reading, I, I haven't done anything yet, and it's reading 96 meters per second, so maybe I should wait until we finish the Dion Pass, huh? Well, that's looking pretty good right there. As long as we can touch it at one point, eventually we're going to encounter it. Uh, or eventually we can make that happen. So 919 seems fine. Let's see. Um, right there would be a good time to meet up with it. Uh, hopefully we'll get the same sort of deal after passing Dion. Uh, if we zoom in 
and see is there something we can do to help our orbit after this? I mean we're already passing fairly close and I don't see that it's affecting our orbit that much. Uh, in fact you can barely see that there's a blue line going in to the encounter and it's basically matching the purple line that comes out. So this poor little moon of Saturn does not have too much influence over our orbit. I think we'll just let it be. Uh, if we focus on Dion and see how much gravity it has, it has 0.02 g's and its escape velocity is 510 meters per second. So it's, yeah, it's tiny. And we're going very fast. Okay, where's, uh, I think that's it. Let's see. Is that Dion? Yeah. Definitely. Its SOI is about 1,400 kilometers. Okay, let's see. Log visual observations. Flatlands transmit. This has a lot more science to do in space near Dion. I probably won't keep track of which ones we actually get the data from. We got that one. Okay, hopefully we'll get most of it anyway. I'm sure we'll get plenty. Will we get the telemetry? Does it work on this one? Is it just our Ganymede lander that has the problem? Yeah, we got we got data from analyzed telemetry with this. I don't know why we have a problem with that lander. Anyway, transmit this. Let's see the orbital perturbation experiment, whether it works. Yep. I don't know why it's... It's just the one that is on the mission that requires analyzed telemetry. That's the one that we happen to not be able to get telemetry from. Still flatlands. Dion does not have... Io's proliferation of biomes. At least it doesn't seem so. Waiting for another biome. Nope, I... Oh, they're, they're scarred region. Okay, I was worried that we were all, we'd only have one biome. That wouldn't be nice. Well, that's not biome dependent. The visual observations, good. Let's transmit that. and analyze telemetry will work. Okay, that's a duplicate. And temperature scan is new. Geiger counter is new. But we're back over flatlands. So as far as I could tell, only two biomes so far with Dion. Maybe if we went polar we'd get more, but that's all I can see for now. But still, plenty of science. We're up to 3,910. Are you excited for all the technology we're going to unlock? I'm excited. Colonization, the colonization parts cost a lot though. I think that, that science, the colonization science tastes like 2,000 or so. Okay, we are now out of the SOI of Dion. Encounter has been successful. We did our flyby. And now let's plot for that boost up to Titan's orbit. Let me go higher and then maybe here pull it down and let's say we do that later. Ah, there we go. That's what I was hoping for. I figured that that would be the combination that would work. But we really need to get into the atmosphere of Titan with the little lander probe. So we want a very close pass. But finally, we're going to be doing this. This, at least, is something that has been done. This is not beyond history. They did land a little probe on Titan. Yeah, we can get arbitrarily close to Titan. Uh, looks like in the dark there, but no telling what the actual light situation is once we get there after however many days. Um, 51 days. So it might be in a totally different place. Uh, so... We're talking about one maneuver that costs 991 meters per second, a second maneuver that costs 181 meters per second, well within the budget of this stage. So we're good, the asterisk stage. 
getting a lot of work. So let's add that alarm. In nine days, we'll have to do the first maneuver. And yeah, I think I'll leave it there. We have done many things. We have landed a probe on Europa. That hasn't been done. Uh, we got another Kerbal to our moon base. And we have uh, flown by Dion. So in the next episode, we will aim to perhaps even uh, complete this Titan shot. Uh, we have this Exo Moon Explorer. That's just a maneuver I'll probably do quickly. I forget what this AJS, probably encountering something soon. That's another Jupiter mission. And uh, as far as what we're building, we've still got 44 days before the science lab that's going to attach to our Earth orbit station will be complete. So we're going to be taking care of this before we can handle that. All right, so on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.